Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good greetings. Hopefully everyone is safe and sound um, at home. And today I will be watching this video by Mark Rober, um, one of the YouTuber that I think I would actually suggest any kids that is interested in engineering and also science uh, to watch and subscribe to. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'm referring to the Mark Rober channel. Um, do so, please do so. Um, and this video today is uh, titled How to See Germs Spread. So I think it is to raise an awareness um, in relation to what is going on currently. Um, so I'm not sure what is the content yet. I haven't watched this of course. So let's watch this together if you haven't. And I've always thought if we could somehow just see the germs around us, everyone would be a lot more careful and we'd get sick way less. Unfortunately, that's still not possible. So I did the next best thing by running a day-long experiment in this third grade classroom. I found this powder called Glow Germ and just like real germs, when it's on your hands, you can't see it. But unlike real germs, if you turn a black light on, it becomes visible. But it transfers to things you've touched, so it provides a really good way to visualize exactly how germs spread. So before the kids arrived, as a control, I went around and noted any pre-existing spots in the room that fluoresced under the black light, and then it was go time. The kids, of course, had no idea what we were doing and that the teacher had been secretly infected with the glowing powder. So she randomly shook the hands of three kids, but didn't touch any of the rest. And so with that, they just went about their normal day. Okay, that is an interesting way to do an experiment, a real experiment uh, and see even if the original carrier is the one person that's the teacher in this case and then she only spread by shaking hands with three students what will happen throughout the day, right? At break, I did choose one random student and he agreed to letting me put some of the powder on his hands too. And then two hours later at lunchtime, I checked the results. Remember, everything you see here started with just the teacher and one student having a little of that powder on their hands. And because my flashlight can only illuminate one spot at a time, I used Photoshop to better visualize our observations of where germs were left behind, including on the other kids. Uh oh, we're pretty hot over here. Oh, right here. And they were actually pretty diligent about washing their hands. This was the desk of the kid that was infected. And what's crazy is that germs could live on a hard surface like this for up to nine days. And so you can see how important it is to disinfect the things a sick person regularly touches. For example, this was the phone of the teacher in the experiment. Even if you wash your hands really often, if you immediately pull out your phone, a lot of those germs just go right back on your hands. Think about when the last time was that you cleaned your phone. My friend Joanne at the Wall Street Journal recently demonstrated you can clean your phone with an antibacterial wipe every day for at least a year and it doesn't affect the oleophobic coating at all. And this hopefully gives you a better mental model of why it's really important to wash your hands or use hand sanitizer after being at places like this or this or this or this. Cleaning commonly touched surfaces is important because even if a virus is spread through airborne transmission, those tiny droplets don't stay in the air for long. Then they land on surfaces waiting to be touched by our hands. Which raises an important point. The ultimate defense against catching a virus is just don't touch your face. Your eyes, nose, and mouth are like the single weak spot on the Death Star when it comes to viruses. There's a good analogy to make people understand. Right, and then this makes me think, right, what, where's my phone? <laughs> I forgot, where's, okay, this there, it's charging. Because I just wash my hand before I eat. But then, before I eat, I touch my phone, right? So, it, it's a false security that I have thought, thinking that me washing my hand is foolproof when after that, I'm not sure about this table, right, so... Should I be paranoid or...? That's the only way they can get in to infect you. But as you can see here, not touching your face is easier said than done. True. We do, we, we do it without realizing it. 
And before you think, yeah, well that's just kids for you, this was what the teacher's face looked like at the end of the day, and she said she tried extra hard to remember not to touch her face. I found this result fascinating, so I put the powder on my own hands for a few hours, and I resisted the urge to touch my face so many times that I fully expected I was going to have a perfectly clean face and the moral high ground. And then this is what I saw. <laughs> What the heck? I genuinely have no idea when any of this came on. But that, that makes me wonder, right? Because sometimes we use things like this, right? Our cloth. But we touch it first, right? Is it stick to this one before we, you know, things like that? Until I reviewed the footage. Oh, well, there you go. On average, okay, we touch our... That is that that's direct contact without us realizing it when we didn't didn't expect it. No. Face sixteen times an hour, which is why washing hands is so important. It's impossible to catch a virus directly through your hands. It's as futile as shooting the outer surface of the Death Star. The problem is we use our hands to help the virus out by constantly giving it a ride to our figurative Death Star exhaust ports. <laughs> Because of this, I ran another experiment with some of the kids after lunch. First, I had them put some lotion on their hands that also glows under a black light. But then I told them I made a mistake and used the wrong lotion. Can you guys just wash, go wash your hands real quick. And do a good washing, right? Yeah, do the right washing, okay? I just tricked you guys again. Because what I really wanted to do is test how good you are at washing your hands. So guess what I'm gonna do now? Show me your hands. But before I show you how effective they actually were at washing their hands, here's what you should quickly know about viruses. They are super tiny, but also the most abundant biological entity on the planet. In fact, there's over 10 million viruses in any single drop of seawater. And a lot of types of viruses are beneficial to the planet's ecosystem, and only an insanely tiny percentage affect humans at all. And they're really simple. Viruses are basically a shell with some DNA inside, and they just want to spread and duplicate. That's their only goal. But they're so simple that they need a host to do that. So they reproduce by infecting their host cells and then trick them to become factories that just make more exact copies of the virus. When you get sick and then cough or sneeze or wipe your nose and then touch a surface, you're putting copies of this virus out to find other hosts and just repeat the process. And so here's what the kids' hands look like after washing their hands. Uh-oh, look at the backs. Let me see your fingernails. Oh, look at all those germs. Oh, your thumb. Oh, my hand. Oh, look at your wrist. Look at your wrist. We all sort of have a habitual way of washing our hands. So once again, I tried this myself using the typical quick way I do it in my muscle memory. Granted, that's better than nothing, but you can see the difference compared to when I was deliberate and took 20 seconds. Which is why it helps to do things like sing the happy birthday song twice, or you could do what I do and follow Brandon Flowers' example. Jealousy, turning saints in eager eyes Cause I'm Mr. Brightside and then for a final experiment 20 seconds okay i'm touching my my face <laughs> okay 20 seconds right so sometimes i i think i wash it long enough even though it might be just 10 seconds and because we are impatient right so time to tr retrain ourselves Experiment. I wanted to show how dumb handshaking is, so I infected the first kid with the powder and then had them do a handshake chain down the line. The fifth person here still had significant traces on their hand, so I put him at the first and lined four more kids up after him, and three of their hands glowed. So we got trace germs from the original person all the way down eight handshakes later. So if you ever meet me in real life, please don't be offended if in lieu of a handshake I offer you a fist bump and a selfie. In conclusion, what does this all mean with regards to the coronavirus? COVID-19. That is a good illustration, right? To to visualize things. Eight percent down. Meaning that even though my friend is doesn't have any symptom and he doesn't have the virus in his body, but at his in his hand, he might have got like five percent down the road and transferred to me and then I touch my face. Now it's really amazing. Team. You should be concerned to take this seriously, but regardless of what you see in the coming weeks, there's absolutely no need to panic. As I'm sure you've heard a bunch by now, our goal is to flatten the curve so that reported cases stay just under the capacity of the healthcare system. And social distancing is the best knob that we can turn to affect that. Yep, well, that's why we are staying at home, right? or away from anyone else. 
The reason this helps should hopefully make more sense after watching this video, especially for those who have been doubting the science and feeling like this is an extreme reaction. And my take here is I'm a practical optimist. The upside is while this virus is bad, it could be way worse. And this gives us a chance as a global community to get some systems and methods in place to handle something potentially even more drastic in the future. Also, maybe it will lead to changing some social norms, like replacing handshakes with fist bumps, or when people are really sick, thinking it's okay to mingle about and go to work. Globally, the normal flu kills anywhere from a quarter to a half a million people a year, due in large part to people not practicing good germ hygiene. So if this experience makes people more socially aware of the right precautions to take when they get sick, that will save countless lives for years to come, long after this coronavirus is old news. And make no mistake, this is going to be rough for some more than others, but history has shown that us humans are pretty resilient. These types of things can bring out the worst in us, but they can also bring out the best, most wholesome parts of us, like these Italians practicing their social distancing with an impromptu balcony concert. How we feel about the situation is largely dependent on just which part we choose to focus on. For me, that means being grateful to the heroes in our healthcare system, or the school lunch ladies still providing free lunch for kids who depend on them, or the scientists all over the world who are working tirelessly seven days a week to create better testing methods and a vaccine. This is gonna be a bumpy ride for us, but the economy will eventually bounce back as it always does, and we'll be better off as a global community for having gone through this. Again, take this seriously, but there's absolutely no need to panic. We totally got this. While I just so happened to be filming at their school, the principal came over to the PA to make an announcement. Because of this virus, we are going to be closing school for three weeks. <laughs> that kid at the end is... <laughs> okay, I touched my face again. But that was... Uh, how many of us have that kind of reaction? Um, I don't know. Um. It's just an opportunist. In fact, a common thread you'll see with successful people is they treat their trials and challenges as opportunities for growth. And while these are difficult times, now that our schedules have been totally cleared, we have potentially a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to invest in ourselves. Okay, so that was the video and I think it was very informative, uh, educational, entertaining at the same time, but the crucial thing in, in, in capturing the attention of the viewers is being entertaining at the same time, right? So that's the part that I think um, I still feel at, I think. Um, because I do teach engineering subject in the university and I do teach some of it, I, I do put it some of these teaching classes online on YouTube here. However, it is not in the format that is entertaining for everyone. So it is beneficial for those who are taking the course, but not for those who are not taking the course and just want to understand things. Right? So a channel like this is, is very good, I think, in, in, in making people understand things that normally are in the literature, in the text, etc. that some people understand, but the normal people, they, they, they do not understand what it means. Right? So we need people to to be able to translate that into a format that people can watch, be, being entertained, and learn many things at the same time. Hopefully, I will get there one day in the future, inshallah. So, um, with that, with all of this, what we have seen, do take the precaution, do wash our hand 20 seconds, inshallah, for me too, and do not touch our face. I'm not sure if we have touched, then can we sanitize our face? Anyone can answer that? Please do. I do not know the answer to that. Um, see you next time.